Initializing Dr. Zealot stream. Transformation begin. Zorg. Hello, pute pitiful humans. I am Softimus, your host for the After Hours Gaming League. I have killed Dr. Zealot with my mind. Soon, all will come to know the power of Softimus Pro uh hello ladies and gentlemen uh sorry about that um one of my roommates got a little out of control and decided he wanted to get on the stream but we do have some exciting games for you tonight on the after hours gaming league season three it's gonna be cisco versus google tonight we have some crazy exciting matches and in fact we're just gonna go straight into it right now let's go ahead and go into the game All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another wonderful night of StarCraft here in the After Hours Gaming League Season 3. It's gonna be Cisco versus Google. Let's go ahead and introduce the players down here. In the bottom left-hand corner, we have our blue Protoss representing Team Cisco. He is... Gar. Of course, up here in the top right-hand corner, representing uh, who I think a lot of people are rooting for, our Red Zerg, he uh, is Haxer. Actually, that's the plural of Haxer, that is Haxor. And of course, uh, representing Team Google. So it's gonna be red for Google tonight, and it's gonna be blue for Cisco tonight. Now, of course, both players, a uh, very uh, standard start here on Daybreak. No shenanigans going on so far. So uh, that's fortunate to see that we're not seeing any sort of a six pool shenanigans or any sort of thing on this map. Uh, of course, it's fairly difficult to pull off at this level of play, those sorts of shenanigans. Of course, we have the probe already set him setting himself up to uh, pylon block any sort of expansion, but it is gonna be a spawning pool first. This Zerg ain't having no pylon blocking. And of course, Gar, it looks like he's gonna go for a uh, Forge Fast Expand, um, as is uh, what we very typically see here from Protoss. Now, is he gonna go Nexus first, actually? It looks like it. Oh, this little probe. Oh, Mr. Probe, oh, oh. Oh, he gets hit again by the drone. He's not gonna be able to keep that up for much longer. The drone does have to go back now, and he's going to get uh, pretty good timing on his hatchery. The uh, going for the early spawning pool, in this case, uh, worked out pretty well for him. And yes, this is the wall placement that I like to see. Gar is very well trained on his wall, deciding to put the forge at the bottom, an extra pylon at the top. We'll see the gateway drop down here, and then, of course, the cybernetics core here, leaving a little bit of an area right here for a zealot to stand and block the very nice placement there by Gar. Very calculated. He's practiced this map quite a bit, you can tell, just by uh, just by the mechanics that you see out of him. And this is what you see out of a lot of the Cisco players, right? Is the Cisco players, they really have their mechanics down pat. They know the maps. They know the walls that they need to make. They uh, are pretty good on their macro, and they can do some really excellent things. Now. We did see them earlier in the season, a couple weeks ago, go off against Senga, and unfortunately they weren't able to take them down. But uh, they did a good job. Oh, that early spawning pool is gonna allow a couple of links to get into the base here. And those links are gonna be really annoying, especially harassing the uh, assimilator here, uh, harassing the gas. Oh man, that's gonna be some lost mining time. And at this point, at this level of play, every little thing counts. Those Zerglings are just going to be so annoying to deal with. And most importantly, Gar, uh, he probably won't lose too much to this, but it's just going to mess up his timings. It's going to put him, you know, 15 seconds behind. And when you're at this level of play, it gives you a really, I don't know how, how to describe it. It gives you kind of a dirty feeling, right? When you want to 
when you execute your build very cleanly, it makes you feel very confident. And having something like this in your base just kind of messes with you. And that said, he, this distraction is big enough that he's going to go ahead and plant his third hatchery. But look at this. Gar's already thought of this. He planted the probe here. And there's no Overlord here. So Gar could have done some shenanigans. He could have dropped a pylon down there. Could have actually killed that with a couple of cannons. But he was distracted in the main. And so it looks like Hax is just going to get away with having this third base up early. Meanwhile, Haxers, with some nice Overlord placement, going ahead and throwing the Overlords down at the second, at the natural and the third, um, and getting just every bit of scouting info that he needs. This Urgling is still alive. That's really, uh, I gotta tip my hat to, to Haxers there, uh, microing those around and being able to get all the scouting information that he absolutely uh, wants and needs. If we take a look, yeah, he does know about the robotics facility coming down. Um, and so this looks like it's just going to go out into sort of a passive game from here. Um, our Protoss player looks like he wants to go for uh, some 2-2 shenanigans. Or not really shenanigans, but sort of a 2-2 timing um, with uh, Colossus. Queen coming out here for the Zerg player. And yeah, this is going to take a very passive look at the game here. Now, it's still possible at this point... It's still possible, yes, that this could actually be an immortal push, and it is. Um, the sentry coming out was a good tell there. So, you know, actually, Haxers doesn't have the level of information he probably wants, and this is that timing, that 7 minute, uh, 30 second, 8 minute mark. This is the timing that you really want to stick an Overlord in your Protoss player's base, because this is when they have that first immortal pop out, they have that first. Um, well, first Colossus will pop out later, but you'll, you should be able to see the Robotics Bay if it's coming out. And yes, it is going to be some sort of a Sentry Immortal play here by Gar. Um, and this sort of timing should come out at about the 12 minute and 30 second mark, the way that he's got it set up right here. So, uh, Haxers has got to be careful here. Now, does he have... Yes, he does have Metabolic Boost on the way. And so he has a number of Zerglings here. He probably is setting up a, a little bit of a run by. And actually, the door is wide open. There is no Zealot blocking that front door. Um, if Gar's reaction time is fast enough, he will be able to drop down a force field. Um, in fact, he has many, many force fields. So this is definitely going to be a Sentry Immortal push. Now, Gar actually slacking a little bit on his upgrades. He needs to get that 1-1 uh, one, one going. That's going to be really important for that 12 minute, 30 second timing window. Here we go, moving across the map. Now, actually, this could be devastating. Zerglings, Zerglings can destroy this composition, and the Gar should know this. There needs to be a couple of Zealots with this army or the capability to warp in. And he's going to get completely cut off. This might be terrible right now. The Zerg player, he could totally go for this. And this is going to be huge. Gar's in a lot of trouble. A huge number of Zerglings streaming in. Oh, but the force fields are actually not too bad still. Picking off a number of centuries, the Immortals, they're going to fall. Those force fields are not going to stay up. And oh my gosh, it's just a slaughter. The Protoss player right now is just losing absolutely everything. And just just for minerals, just for Zerglings. And even though he did warp these uh, Zealots in, and he is going to be able to clean this up, that was a terrible trade for him. The Zerg player is now so far ahead. The timing window that he wanted to hit at 12 minutes and 30 seconds is now completely blown away because this Spire is going to be out on the map. He's going to have Mutalus. Uh, Haxos is going to have Mutalus on the map. And the Protoss player, he's now in a lot of trouble. He's got to make something happen real quick. Now, this Warp Prism is a really great play here, actually working in a number of Stalkers and Sentries. Is he going to try to actually do this? This is a real man move here. Gar showing us the, what uh, Mantos looks like. Moving in here, and in fact, Haxorus does not have the number of healers that he, he needs out on the map right now, and he's just going to lose this third straight up. This is actually such a bold play here by Gar. Unbelievable, able to take out that third. Meanwhile, at the base of Gar, 
he uh, is taking a little bit of a beating, but these Zerglings, are they going to be able to bust through the front door? They're taking a beating on that cybernetic score. They're going to have to get by and kill absolutely everything they do. They're streaming into the base, but there are Zealots here, and those Zealots are going to very easily be able to kill up the Zerglings. But meanwhile, the natural of Haxus is far under attack. Haxus is actually in terrible trouble right now. He's got to make something happen, and he does not have enough DPS to make it happen. These Stalkers are just going to be able to take out too many of those Mutalists before he can kill them. Uh, there's not a critical number of Mutalists on the map, and what was going to be a 12 minute and 30 second Immortal Sentry push has now turned into a 12 minute and 30 second Zealot and Stalker push. Gar, man, looking so strong in game number one. This looks like Cisco could take it. We could see GG any second now. Oh my gosh, Gar. Gar, Gar, Gar. Now, it does look like these Stalkers are going to get cleaned up by the Mutalists, but still, that's not going to be enough. Haxus is just too far behind. He's lost absolutely everything. 35 workers have been killed. There's no way that he can come back from this. And GG. Oh my gosh, ladies and gentlemen, we saw an incredible game one there. Haxers, he was looking really strong, especially with that first engagement. He took out the Immortal Sentry push and uh, just eliminated what could have been a very strong timing window for Gar. But Gar, uh, he just saw his enemy's weakness. He guessed right, and he went in and kind of maybe a little bit of a coin flippy play, but still went in there with just a huge number of zealots, took out the third, and that was able to kill Haxer's production enough to the point that he didn't have this critical number of mutalisks in order to take out the attacking force in time. We'll be right back with more After Hours Gaming League Season 3. We're going to go into Game 2 here in a second, uh, and we need just a second to set it up, so we'll be right back.